Good day, everybody. Um, OK, well, today I want to share with you, especially with everyone who's an illustrator and works in 2D, uh, since 3D is really my forte and I still love illustration, I've had to come up with some techniques to help me um, better get the results I want when I'm working on 2D. So uh, one thing I have developed, and I did this by watching many things on the internet, like, I don't know, David Rebois, uh stuff on paint overs for 3D and stuff like that. Uh, I developed this really simple way to make a mannequin of your character that you can use to, to make some more complex, uh, more complex uh, shots with different perspective that maybe you couldn't do if you're not as great into the uh, as you could be. So, okay, I won't be taking long on just explanations. Um, if you're an illustrator, I'm assuming you may not know the software I'm using right now, although the name is like right here. Uh, this is Blender. You can download this free at blender.org. I just let you see a little text with that. Mm. You can download this software here. Download that, blender.org, and there it is. So if you want to download this, you can do so here. OK. Um, some basics of 3D uh, for you guys if you don't really know how to make any 3D at all. Well, this part of the window here is called a 3D viewport. Here you can see everything that you have in your 3D space. In my case, I just have a cube here. Um, there's not much to this. Uh, you have these little arrows you can use to move your, your model with. Um, you can rotate the camera if you're using, you're going to use Blender uh, with center button, with button 3. Um, but if you really want to get some basics on 3D and especially on Blender, if you're going to use this for some work of yours, you can do so. I'll may I'll paste some links on the show notes so that you can get to know this a little better. Uh, for now, here here it goes. When you are going are going to make a model of one of your characters, the fin the first thing you're going to need, especially if you're not accustomed to 3D space, is a little reference sheet of your character. In my case, I have one prepared. I have this, I have had this for quite a while now. Uh, this is a character, and as you can see, I'm not really that good in 2D, but this will suffice. Uh, this model I've already made uh, in the past, but I'm going to use this same reference sheet to, to work this one. OK, um, you just need to drag and drop your image into Blender. And you'll have it as a backdrop. OK. You will notice that it is a little blurry and a little opaque. You can work everything regarding this uh, in this panel. It's not really that complicated. You can just read everything that says that it says here. I'm going to, this is for the front view. I'm going to adjust the position of this thing. to the soles of the feet of the model. And since this is going to be the front view, I'm going to center this model to this blue line that you may not be able to see because of the video quality. But if you do can if you can see it then okay but there's a blue line here. This line indicates the Z axis. Um, okay. I'm going to center this just a little bit so that we don't have any problems. I think that's good enough. Or maybe a little. Uh, yeah, I think that's good. OK. When we have done this, we go to the side view, in which you can see I have nothing, and do the same thing. Drag and drop. Uh, 
I will copy the Y coordinates and center the side view, uh, centering on the head. This one doesn't have to be all that, all that exact. Oh, for God's sake. Okay, there it goes. <coughs> okay, once you have this, and you can just adjust the opacity of this thing. Once you have this, you have both a front and a right view of your model. Um, I'm not going to go into detail of how to make this little uh, reference sheet. If you're an illustrator, I think it should be obvious how to do this. Um, but I'm guessing there's some reference on how to do this on online. So, OK. <sighs> Let's start. This 3D model we're going to make is going to be really simple. We don't want anything complicated because we just want this as a basis, as a as a base to 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 work our illustration. So, uh, inspired by stuff like, let me give you an example. Have you ever seen these dummies that you would use to reference pose, like pose drawing? Dummy. These things like here, yeah, here they are. We're going to be making something like this. The important part and why we need this this reference sheet for this is that we want this dummy to have the proportions of our character because that will make things easier when we start painting over. So, with this in mind. Let's do this. OK. First thing first, we always, and I mean always, except for some exceptions, start with a cube when we model. We are going to take this cube up, or rather here. If you're going to use Blender, you want to enter edit mode, which you can do here. Object mode is the default mode, uh, and, text and edit mode is which the one in which we are right now. So, okay. We want to divide everything we do in 3D in the middle. Why? Because that way we only need to do one side of the model and the other side is going to be made automatically for us. I erase this and I add a little modifier. This modifier called mirror will just do what it says. It will mirror what we're doing one side to the other. So if I take this side and pull it, it will pull on the other side uh, just as well. OK. So this is really basic. And what we need to keep in mind is the dummy for drawing, for poses. So we're going to start with just the upper torso. This is going to be a lot like vector drawing. When you're doing this, it's basically going to be just that. Pulling little control nodes to create shapes. And it does seem that because I'm streaming, <laughs> this thing's getting a little, a little slow, but doesn't matter. This is going to be a simple one. OK, so we have an upper torso, OK? But if we go to the side view here, we're going to notice that it doesn't look like a torso at all from this side. It looks like this in 3D. Why is this? Well, that is because we in 3D need to care about all three dimensions and not just the view we are we are using. Okay, so an important part of this is that when I'm on side view I need to take into account the fact that in the front view I've already uh, given this a shape so we've already moved the x-axis, which you can watch here, and the z-axis, 
So when I'm here, I don't want to move any of these axes. I just want to move on Y, which is the same. And I'm only going to move side to side. Or in the case of the model, the point view of the, of the model, it's going to be front and back. OK. Let's get this thing here. Just here. Maybe. Yeah. Something like this. Of course, if you are looking at it in 3D, it doesn't look like Torso yet. So, what we need to do is add some more detail. In the case of Blender, again, it's going to be with Control R to add an edge loop, which is to say to divide the shape into more little divisions so that you can give shape to it. Okay. Mm. Okay, this is looking better. Um, yet, we kind of want more of a cylindrical shape, right? Because, well, it's a torso. So, I'm going to add some more cuts here. Maybe, well, I think that's going to be enough. If you count here, we're going to have one, two, three, four, and four on the other side, eight sides to this. So. It's going to be an hexagon from the upside view. And just like that, we're going to do this thing here. Something like this, OK? So that we get some shape into this form here. We don't have to be really precious about this because it doesn't really matter. It's just for reference use. Okay. Um, this now looks a little more like a torso. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. We could add some more detail. Uh, I'm not going to do it because this is some basic stuff. I'm just going to pull this a little upwards so that we have this little shape. And uh, pull this to the front. Just a little so that we get some shape here. Like that. Okay, a little torso, a really simple and <laughs> stubby and weird torso at a torso, just for our dummy, for our mannequin. Okay, then we go to the lower body. Uh, for this, we're going to do basically the exact same thing. So what we really can do is just take one of these, Control L, to select linked uh, vertices or vertex and duplicate with shift D. Okay, and I bring this down. And here you notice that we 3D artists are really, really spoiled because we get to do this kind of thing. It doesn't matter. Just re accommodate this stuff and we have a hip now from a torso and an upper torso. Okay. Something like this. What I really advise you guys, special if you're just starting with 3D, is that you work one side little, in this case the front just a little, then work on the side view, then work, which is less necessary but still you need to do it, work the top view, you do need to. Okay, if you do notice, 
it still has this kind of torsoy shape. So on the side view, as I said, we work that. And everything in 3D is made by doing three really simple things. Moving stuff, which is to say something like this. Uh, scaling stuff, which is to say something like this. And rotating it, which is to say something like this. Okay. Every 3D software you, can, you will ever use is going to have the exact same basic principles for modeling, the exact same basic tools. Okay, let's take the bottom part. Just make it fit. I think this this part here. Let's go a little back. Yeah. Okay. I think we're pretty much there. Okay. So I said this is really basic stuff. You don't need to you don't need to worry about making it pretty. It's just as a reference. It's just going to be used as a reference. Okay. Um, maybe I'm going to pull the size of, thing, of this thing a little upwards. Like that, and just once. Okay. Here's what we have so far. Okay. Um, then, to the middle of the torso, the belly. Let's duplicate again. Oh, careful. Shift D, in here, two, go this round. Okay. And one important thing here is not to want to have everything attached because if we were to do that, we would just end up with a model that's way too complex for the purpose of just being a, a reference tool. So we're going to keep it simple, and we're going to physically separate every part of the body. Now, why these three dimensions, you might ask? These three dimensions give us something that some of these dummies that you would use for post-reference don't have, which is it will give you a better uh, flexibility for the torso. That's why we're using these three parts. Okay. Again, since we've already shaped this in the front view, we just want to to give it shape by moving it both front and back, but never up or down, because we've already done that. Okay. Something like this. Really basic, but we have a torso now. Really basic tor torso that will help us reference this. Okay, on to the legs I'm thinking. Okay, let's go to the legs. The legs are 
obviously going to be um, way more easy than a torso. And one of the exceptions I said there would be to modeling stuff when I said that you should always start with a cube are the limbs. Uh, why? Because really limbs are just uh, stretched out cylinders. So let's get a cylinder in here. Mesh cylinder. It's gone up. Okay. Cylinder. An eight side cylinder because you really don't need more than that. It's a really simple shape. You're not going to be adding any detail, any muscle information, any anything. So you don't need to worry about having more than just eight sides to have something that will look round. Because once we do this smooth shading, it does look basically like a circular thing. Okay. A little thinner. Thin. Okay, careful. I think that's about right. Yeah. Okay. Here we are. Uh, we're going to take the top of this. And this is going to be going up to the hips, obviously. And rotating a little. Not that much. Okay. And this part is going to be going. Okay. If you notice, I put this in the the thickest part of the thighs. I guess from here we can extrude, which is to say, it will well extrude it. it will make new topology from the place we we decided to make new topology from, and to the top part of the knee. Then inside view. We are going to put this in place. Again, really simple shapes. Really, really simple shapes. Just reference. There. Okay, come on. There we go. And. Maybe here and scale it a little. There we go. Okay, we have torso and upper legs. Then down here. Um, maybe just cut this part here. Shift D. And down to the bottom part of the knee. Then extrude, which is the same tool I told you about, all the way to the ankles. Again, give it a little shape, not too much. It doesn't really need any more shape than just this. Okay, and back it goes. There it is. Look at this. Okay, it's a really simple model, which is starting to look like a character. Okay, here we go. Then we, well, taking a page from book of these dummies that I told you about. The knees are just going to be spheres. Why not? Uh, you don't really need any more than that and that way you are going to have a good 
good starting point to know where to rotate this thing. Okay, a sphere. We don't want it that that much like that. Maybe eight by twelve by ten. Yeah, I think that's about right. Um, okay. And just scale it back so that it will kind of fit. It doesn't have to really fit that well in there. It's just a sphere. It's just to know that from there we are going to rotate this model for the poses. Okay? Doesn't even have to be all that well done. Okay. Here's what we have so far. Now on to the arm. Then the neck and the head, and some rigging. Okay. Again, the arm is going to be made with a with a cylinder cylinder of eight. We're going to scale it back, rotate it ninety degrees. In Blender, you can actually input the degrees you want to rotate something, which is cool. Okay, and again we're going to go almost to the base. But not quite, because the shoulder is again going to be just just a, a sphere. Okay. Here it goes. Right there. We're going to take this thing here. And to the top would be top part of the elbow, which again is going to be just a sphere. The same exact procedure we had for the legs we are going to do for the arms right here. Scale it up a little. To to the wrist again. A sphere later. Okay, we have that. We're just going to place it from the top view where it should go. I think my image is a little too big resolution for this. Project. Okay, I think that's the place. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's about right. Okay. Then we need a neck. This is way too high. On. And the neck again is going to be made using a cylinder. Now, all of this might seem complicated if you have never used a 3D program, but this is really simple. If you guys would like to have a little tutorial on the basics of 3D uh, just for modeling, let me know. I'll see what I can do. Can you, uh, if you like this. Next. 
this is actually going to go a little further up about here and with a little rotation and yeah, there we go. No simple neck. Which is just Okay. Always remember to save every so often so you lose your your progress. Okay. Now we need to a head, which is really simple to do. When you're doing it in this fashion, it's actually the head is kind of one of the most difficult parts to model, obviously, because of the face topology. Every single mm, face muscle needs to have its topology well rendered so that it will look good when it moves. But here, we don't really need a face, so it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm gonna need a sphere, UV sphere. I'm going to rotate this. 90 degrees. Okay. Make it taller. About the right size for the shape of the head without the hair. Which I think is here. Okay. Seems good. For the back. Okay. And we're going to just pull this downwards to the chin, which is basically all the detail we need for this purpose. We just pull a few of these vertices. So that it doesn't break. And scale the chin a little. Now, when you're doing something in 3D, especially if you're coming from an anime background, it's going to be kind of difficult to actually keep the way you draw stuff, because invariably, even even really great uh, styles, some stuff is just impossible to get when you're making 3D compared to when you're drawing, which set will set style, but we're going to try to keep this thing here. Okay, Z. Down there. I don't remember, I don't recall that when I made this. For the model, I had to to reshape some of it because it wasn't just looking right. Like here, where you can see this little mistake here. So just reshape stuff accordingly. It's just not a big deal. Just a little here. Okay. So we have a head, we have arms, we have a torso, legs, which is need. Uh, oh, we like the the shoulders and the elbows. Okay. Sphere and scale. Sphere and just scale back a little. Okay, and bring it back. 
There it goes. Okay. <sighs> then we're going to go to the feet, which are going to be really, really basic feet. Mm. We're going. We're going to make this starting with a cube. Okay. There it goes. Cube. Hold back. There's going to be, and I don't think you will be able to see it um, by check this out here. This red line here, which shows you basically where the ground stands. So you want your feet to touch that. Okay. Need to make this here. Something like this, then straight to space. All the way to the ball of the feet, where you're going to be rotating this. Shape it a little like a fit or like a foot rather. Again, since this is just going to be reference, we just don't want to give it too much work. Or too much thought, too much thought, but just have this be like this. Yeah, something like that Ooh, looks, I think, better. Something like that, okay. Then we want these two faces duplicated, brought to the front, extruded. <laughs> you know, some people tell me that doing stuff like this is cheating because they kind of assume that doing this kind of stuff is no work, but I think whoever stayed <laughs> in the stream up to this point is going to know that it's not that easy. Okay, I'm just going to give it a little shape. Not much, doesn't need it. But where go? Here we go. Still looks kind of weird. Maybe do something like this. 
we don't going to go into much much trouble with the fix really. So we're going to replace that when we paint over it. So just an overview. This is what we have. Okay. Really simple model. Now onto the hands. Which as you can see is kind of little separated, but doesn't matter. Okay, uh, the hands again, we don't really need much detail. Uh, if you would want a detailed uh, hand model, I might just do a video on just that because that I think would take even more time than just making an entire body. The hand is really, really, really complicated to make in 3D. But For reference stuff, it works wonders because it's like having a little mannequin of a hand. Um, let's see. I'm just going to go here. Well, right, uh, okay. Again, we don't need much detail, just a few indications that this is indeed a hand so that we have the tools to make it better when we draw over this. Just a little shape for shape's sake. Okay, I think that's kind of enough. I'm just going to put this thing on. Yeah, it looks okay. Uh, then we take the same thing again, do the same model, duplicate it, bring it forward, and repurpose this thing. Okay, then a little thumb, which we can get with just a cube, really. Okay. One or two cubes. Let's have this go here. And here, and we take it, rotate it, and there's the thumb. Okay. Well, but the thumb about there it goes and there it is okay so I think we have an entire body now see how it looks. It looks fine. I mean, I do say so myself. For the purpose of just posting a character and stuff like that, I think this is really, really great tool. This is a really great tool to do that. You don't need to work really that much. Something like this. And you get some pretty interesting results when you actually use this thing. So, okay, just going to adjust this. 
the, fat he the, the hand here, for example, is a little fat bad. Again, we don't care. We just don't care. Doesn't matter in the least. We could be making a really detailed model of a hand to get some really awesome results. But when you do that, when you do that much work, just kind of loses the sense of it being just a reference to right. Okay. So here's the model, complete model. We don't need these background images anymore because what we are going to do now is give this this little mannequin here eh, a little of a of a rigging. Okay, for those who don't know, rigging means to give these characters um, a system with which they can move. The thing which we use to to animate the, the character, but it can also be used just for posing the character. So, the really easiest way to do this, and one really simple rig, uh, is just this, okay. Front view, I'm going to add an armature single bone. Okay, it almost crashed on me, I'm going to save. Is it gonna crash? It's gonna crash, is it? It seems it is. No! It didn't crash, okay. That's awesome. Okay, uh, this bone we're going to take here. And on the properties, we're going to make it x ray. Looks great. Okay. The logic with these bones is to have everything be in order of hierarchy. Uh, what do I mean? I mean, the hip, if you move your hip or your back, everything moves with it. Okay, if you move your back or your hip, uh, your legs are going to move just as well, and your feet because of the legs and because of the knees, and when, if you move, move your back, your your shoulders are going to move with it, your neck, your head, your arms, your hands, everything moves in order. So what we're going to do is go respecting that order with the hip on one side and the back. Okay? In the case of the these bones for the back, we're just going to align these little spheres here with whatever it is that we did. For example, in this division, I'm placing it there. And with this division here, I'm placing it there. Again, with the neck, I go all the way up to the head and just this little something, so it looks more like a spine. Okay, goes here. Then a bone for the neck to the base of the head, and one bone going upwards to to the cusp, the top of the head. Okay, and saving. From the hips, and we can start here again, we're going to add a new bone. Let's go down into the center of the knee. And here is where the knee becomes really useful, this little sphere. Um, details of how to do this, okay. You select one of the vertices or whatever from the sphere, Control L, to select everything that's linked to it, uh, Shift S, for the snap menu, uh, cursor to select it, okay, go back to the armature, the bones, and shift S again, snap, uh, selection to cursor, 
which is going to make it go exactly in the center of that sphere. Okay, we go here again uh, to where the ankle would be, then to the ball of the feet, and to the toe. Okay, little simple. Uh, we're just going to have to move this here and move this to the side too. And there it goes. Okay. Then I'm going to go to the shoulder again. Control R, shift S, cursor selected. Go back to armature, add a bone. This one is going to go here. Control L, shift S, cursor selected. This cursor. Okay. Extrude it to the base of the hand. And extrude it to division of the fingers. Then to the tip of the fingers, one for the thumb, which is not going to go here, as you would expect if you do know the anatomy, and I think you do, you know that the first bone of the thumb actually goes on the base of the hand, which is going to be kind of here. Mm. Okay. Up a little. Okay, to the vision, the thumb, then to the tip of the thumb. Okay, and that's it for the bones. You should put them in the place you know is anatomically correct. This can be tricky, but any Good anatomy book will give you the answer to whatever it is that you have doubt on. Uh, one thing that's important is that if you want the shoulder to move, you're going to need to add a collarbone. So let's just add that. Doesn't have to be exact, doesn't matter. This is going to be uh, from here, doesn't matter. Okay, something like this. And from where the collarbone would attach to the to the chest, something like here. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. One thing we need to make sure of is that our bones are properly connected. In this case, they are not. If I rotate this, you notice that the legs don't move with it. So, in that mode, I'm going to take the legs, then the hips, control P to parent, keep offset, and again, if I do this, the leg moves. Okay, if I go here, the foot moves, the ball of the feet move, okay, then the back. It doesn't work, so we take the clavicle bone, then the chest bone. Um, control P, keep offset, and the arm bone to the clavicle, keep offset. There it goes. Okay. And to make the same exact thing on the other side, you just select these bones here. Every single bone you've made on one side, on just one side that isn't in the middle like the spine, the head or the neck. 
duplicate scale on x minus one. There it goes. Okay. Now this is going to make some weird stuff. If you look at the axis of this bone, for example, you will notice that that it moves weird, that it looks okay, but this one is upside down and a little off on rotation. So you're just going to take every bone like this and click Control M, Z axis, and everything's going to be facing upwards, which is what we want. Control N, Z axis, um, it goes for the hand two, control M, Z axis, control M, Z axis, okay. For the legs, it seems it's not going to be necessary. Okay, we just want this bone here to be looking to the other side. So, control N. The y axis and two. Okay. First selected. Good side view. One. And cursor. Okay. This one on Z. This one too. And I think we're set. It's just this one. Okay. I think we're set, set, set. This one set. This one set. Okay. And to finish this, one really simple way to do this is just going to be two. Select the model, then the bones, control P, and we can make um, with automatic weights, it's going to be weird the way this is going to rotate. Yeah, you see, it doesn't really work. So, we're going to have to work a little on this. Um, it's almost done anyway, so. Here goes. Also, since I forgot to attach the thumb to the hand, so here and here. Okay. <sighs> okay. What we're going to do is this. We're going to take the model, then the bones, control P, with empty groups. If I go to this thing here, you're going to see a bunch of groups named after bones, these bones here. Now, which bone is which is beyond anyone's, uh, anyone's knowing. So, what do we do then? It's really easy. We erase this bunch of useless things and go back to the bones, and we're going to name them. Okay, so I take this bone and I'm here. It's the name of the bone. Okay, we're going to go all the way through the skeleton to name these bones. So here we have it. hip, then back one. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure. Hip, back one, back two, then neck, then head, then 
shoulder or clavicle, whatever you want. Shoulder, then arm, then forearm, then hand. Oh, when you're on one side, this one being the left side of the model, you want to actually add a little dot and an L to every name. So arm dot L or forearm rather. Forearm L hand L fingers L thumb L Um, two L. Okay, thumb, thumb, hand, hand, fingers, forearm, arm, shoulder. L. The same on the other side. Or we're going to go with the the legs. It's going to be um leg. L, leg, to L or not, ankle, L, toes, L, then to the other side, toes, right, ankle, Right or R leg to right leg right arm right forearm right And right, isn't this tedious? Um, thumb one right, thumb two right, fingers right. I think that's it. Okay, let's check. Uh -huh, okay, 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 okay. Okay. Again, same thing. Um, model, armature, control P, empty weights. And here we have all these vertex groups. What do we do this with, with this? Okay, we take each part we indicate, for example here, we take the hip, control L, and assign with a weight of one, assign, okay, then, okay, let's go, in order, leg, 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 two, uh -huh. leg, one, leg L, design, leg two, Let's have this one also be part of the one design. Then like two design. And what this is doing, just so you do know, is this. It's going to let us move these things. Um, before we do that, I do have to tell you to take the model and apply the mirror thing, okay, so that we can do all of this, okay, remove that too, 
and this remove from lab one, okay, and call. Fit design shows design lab R here design and this one too design let to R assign uncle R assign chose R assign turn back one assign back two assign neck assign head assign we're going to add this to the chest which is back to design and design then shoulder L it this one doesn't need to have anything assigned to it because this bone its only purpose is just to let us move the arm. Okay, so shoulder doesn't matter, arm L design forearm. Okay, this one's going in arm two forearm assign hand assign fingers assign thumb assign thumb two assign this bone what is this bone here I'm guessing it's no, I don't really know. Okay, we'll check that. Bone O twenty six. Okay, it's this one. Which bone is this? Okay, the shoulder right. Shoulder out. Shoulder. Right, we copy that name, go back to this, and okay, here it is. Cool, okay. <sighs> Arm, right sign, then this sign. Forearm, design, hand, design, fingers, design, thumb one, design, and thumb two, design. And now, for the moment of truth, we have a fully functional mannequin in 3D for whatever you will ever need to do in regards to posing and complex um, complex perspective stuff yeah okay so for a little demonstration let's, see. Uh, let's get a little pose for example uh, how about we do something like this. I thought that we have nothing. Which is a bone.
one's our control bone, which is going to be a parent to both hip and back, hip offset, okay. Let's do this, a little pose, okay. Mm. Let's take this. We did not stop some hip. We should have. Is it what have? Okay. Hmm. Weird. Hip. Oh. Okay. Oh. 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 Control and hip, and there it goes. So it should. Mm. Okay. Yep. Thank you very, very much. There it is. Okay. Let's touch to hip instead of control bone. There we are. Okay. Ah, there's always something, right? Okay, take one leg at a time. Okay, the funny thing about this thing is that you get to make poses and change them real quick, which in 2D you just can't do in this manner at least. Okay. I mean, it's not the best pose, if you will, but. I think it gets kind of work done. She's kind of dancing or something like that. But you get the idea, I think. That by doing this, you can get some poses without really worrying too much just concentrating on having the pose be what you want it to be yeah she doesn't get what what's happening okay so here we have a little pose just for the purpose of showing how this works. I can actually make this not be extreme. So there you go. We have this pretty mannequin we can use for whatever reason we want. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you guys who watched, even if just for a while. I hope you guys like this content. I hope you can get to use it. If you have any doubts, don't hesitate to let me know. And see you later, guys. Bye.